So, hello guys, today we have first day of review, first review of first cards from the new expansion, uh, Way of the Witcher, that's gonna release on the 8th of December. Uh, I can't, I won't rate them with stars or whatever, uh, um, the power like very in a strong way uh, yet, because we don't know all the cards, so some cards might look bad at the moment, but we don't uh, we don't know all of the cards, so some cards might feel OP, OP but we don't know all of the cards. So uh, this is like a first impression uh, when we get uh, all of the cards revealed. Uh, when we will see all of the cards, I will do this again with all of the cards to give them some sort of rating. Uh, last time we had it, I was accurate with some cards and very <laughs> not correct with some other cards. So it's like you never know, some cards just requires playing. And let's start with Alistair, because it's already a playable card, you can already play it in your decks, which makes a little bit uh, interesting uh, changes to the game. Uh, whenever you play a spell card, spawn a random unit with the same provision cost on this unit, counter free, which means that it can proc only three times. So, important stuff. First, this is only a spell. This is not a special, it's a spell. And spells are very awkward. From all of the factions, only two factions have any... Um, faction specific card and it's Nilfgaard with uh, Yen Invocation, this is the only card, and also Northern Realm with uh, the card that Forbidden Magic, Sabrina's Inferno and Pact or whatever it's called or something like this, not not Pact, uh, like the card that boosts uh, uh, a unit and gives it a shield, so it's a very bad card. So basically you have, you can, you have to play some neutral cards and the best neutral card that you can play is on a Romancy from the spells and Alzur Thunder, which is 5 provision card, and that's pretty much it. You can also play Pact, which is 6-4-4, four, four, which is okay. But other than this, all of the spells are a little bit awkward. You can try maybe Becker's Mirror in Revenants, uh, and maybe like Uma if you want to be extra greedy and have some extra fun. So, is this card OP? No, it's definitely not OP, because uh, you, uh, you have to make your deck around it. And opponent can just kill it with six um, removal, like Parasite, or with some tall removal like Karate Heatwave, uh, or Yen Invocation, or something like this. So you have to build a deck around it, and then you have to play spells that are sort of suboptimal. However, if you manage to do everything, uh, you can get quite a lot of value. Uh, but another problem is that variance is a little uh, is very big. For example, if you play on Aeromancy, you can get. Old Spear Deep, which is 12 points, which plays, which means already you get 18 for 11, which is amazing. But at the same time, get, you can get Regis, which is 2 points, and you get 8 for 11. It's not that powerful. So this card is okay, because it's spawning cards, and it's basically giving you 3 points, but you have to play, the, you, make, you have to make a deck around it a little bit, and you have to uh, play in a certain way. So... It's interesting, it's not OP, but it might see some play. Uh, I also want to make a deck with uh, mages with it, maybe Nilfgaard mages, maybe Enar mages. It's another mage, and it supports some something we didn't see in a long time. So yeah, it's okay card. Nothing OP, nothing trash, okay card. Very nice card to get to us to test already. Thank you, CD product for it. Second card. Viper Witcher. So in Viper Witcher, the old one that kills the card from the opponent uh, deck uh, that you know and you hate, uh, has been name has been changed. I don't remember for what, but it will change for something else. And here we have Viper Witcher. So it's a Witcher, which is important because uh, Witcher decks really lacked low provision. Oh, this is five provision, by the way. You can't see it, but it's five provision. Um, five Witcher decks lacked cheap witchers that was a very that was main problem why witcher nilfgaard deck didn't work they lacked witchers like very low provision witchers and it looks like we're gonna get some in this expansion so maybe the witcher deck will be playable but this card put a bleeding on uh, two on an enemy unit and adrenaline spawned a copy of that unit on the top of opponent's deck so how adrenaline worked this is very important this is a main mechanic of the um, expansion so this is really important to understand Adrenaline 6 means that this ability will proc when you have 6 or less cards in your hand when you play it. So if you play it as a... Uh, you have 7 cards in your deck, you play Viper Witcher, 
the ability will proc because you have six cards left in your hand. Uh, this is very important. This is super interesting ability because uh, this adds another layer uh, of balancing because for example you don't have to balance this card by giving the opponent bleed free or make it five power or five provision you can also change it to adrenaline five for example or adrenaline three or nine so this is another layer of balance which is kind of cool uh, but coming back to the card original um, this is six for five and that's it do you spawn a copy of that unit to the top of the opponent cards uh, deck? So you make your opponent uh, mulligan awkward and you make your uh, opponent deck uh, bigger, which might matter. We will go to it through to the next card. But at the same time, it feels like. <laughs> Do you really want to play 6 for 5 just to disrupt your opponent deck a little bit? For example, in round 3, it just. It's just six for five, and that's it. Uh, even if you put a card on it, do you want to counter that then, or maybe Vilgefortz? Then you give your opponent four power instead of something big. <sighs> the payoff is not that big. I think at the moment, knowing only two cards, this card is bad. But we will see. Maybe they will add something that will support this deck. Maybe there will be a card boost self by a lot of cards from on your um, in your opponent deck left. Maybe it, um, maybe it will see some play, but it feels like the it's not enough at the moment. Okay, another card. Maybe I wait. I will move the view so you can see the art because arts as always are amazing. Okay, Colgrim, Colgrim, which I call a budget bribery player or or, or um. Mm, one of my teammates from Team Bandit Gang, uh, gang or uh, his older brother, uh, Colgrim. At the end of your turn, boost self by the difference between number of cards in the player's deck. So basically, you have to play it as your third last card to get the most value. So you play it and you still have two cards left. And then it will proc three times, right? One, two, three. It will proc three times. The problem of this card is that it, well, it supports Hyperfin and it supports the mm, meal at the same time. So depending on strategy, both can work. But the problem is that if your opponent is also playing some sort of Hyperfin or uh, a lot of decks currently just fins to five free cards, then it will boost like by two, three times. Then seven for nine. It's super risky. Also, the first time you play it, it will be. I don't think it would. It will go for more than two, like five. So it will be easy to remove. At the moment, this card to me looks like garbage. <laughs> like it's really not that worth. It's not worth playing like this card uh, just to boost it by Colgrim by one. It feels like crap. I don't. I. I don't know. I. I don't like it at the moment. Uh, I think Colgrim at the moment is. It's a very bad card. I don't see it, but maybe we will see more cards. We, we have to see it, but it's too easy to kill. It's <sighs> the boost. If you play a, a mirror or anything, it's this card is just garbage. So I don't, I don't know. I don't like it at the moment. Cohen, Cohen is basically a Shiru, but for boost. Of course, my okay now. <laughs> so Cohen is. Uh... It's sort of a Shiru, but for boost for Northern Realm. Boost all units with power equal to coins powered by this amount coins is boosted. I think this card is bad. Again, why? Because this is a win more card. How how this card works? So basically, uh, you have to boost this card to the power where you have all of the, your other units with the same power, but at the same time your opponent's units are not this power because you don't want to boost your opponent's most of the time, your opponent's unit as well. So in most cases, you just want to make it to the point that it's super high. So for example, like seven, eight, and you get to this point when you have ve you have very greedy boost the deck and you are probably like hidden behind the um, defender and you have your Vis Visegert, uh, Visigota sorry, uh, like triggering every turn and it has like 12 boosts that you can distribute on Cohen and other units. You can line this up, 
clear coin and you just win more. And that's my problem of this card. I think this is a more, win more card. However, it has some potential because if the meta is very greedy, it's gonna outgrid everything because it's gonna boost all of your unique by a shit ton. I don't think there is an archetype that can outgrid this basically, unless you play like here then. And this is also another uh, option. You boost your cards and your opponent cards and you play cards like Irden, Igni, I don't know, anything that to get rid of all of the mm, boost, boost from the unit. So it's not as garbage as I think uh, Colgrima is. It's very interesting card. The problem is I think it's a win more card. That's it. If you're doing on Cohen like the what he wants you to do on it, you already won a game. That's my feeling. So I don't think you need it. But at the same time, it's only seven provisions, so it's not that uh, expensive. So I think he might see play in some greedy decks. Brechen. So this card is weird, and this card needs to see support because at the moment I don't think it's good. So destroy the rightmost unit on the enemy row with at least five units and adrenaline free with three units. So basically, uh, if you want to use it early, uh, you have to wait until your opponent has five units. So basically, you can't really use it because your opponent won't have five units at the, uh, on the same row uh, in this first five cards, probably. Because you need to use it as in like first five, six, in first six cards. So your opponent can line up twice too. Uh, what decks have more than uh, five units by the, before the round three, before they like adrenaline three? Um, Swarm. And do you want to kill a rightmost card in a Swarm deck? No, it's gonna be like two points. So it's gonna be playing for under the, the, the power. Also, uh, in short round, it's a little bit uh, better because then you can instantly get this adrenaline free and maybe you will have something on the rightmost, but your opponent at the same time can play around it. So how you want to use this deck? With movement. So if you have a lot of movement and you can line up the that rightmost unit of your on your opponent's side is something like super big and super powerful, then maybe it's usable, but it feels like too much effort for not enough payoff. So I definitely people will not play around it in, in first month, so then you can get like some cheesy value from it. But when people will start to learn it, uh, like it used to be with Igni that people stop uh, stop lining up the Igni. I think this card is going to be worse, but it's not unplayable, especially in the movement deck. You can get something from it. So for for now, it's like, okay, we need to see more support, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure about this card. It's most of the time going to be like six, seven, four, eight, and that's not what you're really looking for. Okay, now we're going to a juicy stuff. Beer Witcher Mentor. This is basically a boar. I don't even remember the name of the board because this board is unplayable. Uh, but this one is for five provision and deploy boost cell by one for every damaged allied unit. So this is not that amazing uh, because most of the time you have you will have like two, three self damage cards probably. Also, if your opponent is controlled, maybe you will have zero, or maybe you will have one. So five for five is not that good. But adrenaline three, which means that if you go through the end of the the, the game. Uh, boosted by one for every damage unit instead, so it's also counting the opponent's unit. And if you play before some cards like Hemdal, Wild Boar of the Sea, and you play in general very control heavy deck, and maybe even if you play just um, uh, Arniolf, it's already with Arniolf 7 for 5. Just for Arniolf. Just, just play Arniolf and Beer Witcher Mentor. It's already 7 for 5. It's bad, but it's not unplayable. And you get any unit on the board, like anywhere, and it's already 8 for 5, which is already nice. So I do think that this card is very powerful, especially with uh, Arniolf. Uh, but with all of the mm, control mm, cards in Skellige, it might be stable in every deck at the moment. Uh, it's, it's really powerful. 
I really do think it's a five star already, I can say it. At the moment with this power, remember that uh, CD Projekt can still change these cards. They can make it six Provin, for example. They can make it two power. But at the moment, in these values, this card is very good, I think. Another super interesting card that I called Nerd. Uh, Nerd is super cool design. I love, love the design of this card because I do think it's not OP. It's very strong, but not OP, but it's super cool design. So how does it work? This is a um, raw punishment that you want to use early and raw punishment you want to use late. So do you have this weird dynamic. Also Adrenaline 4 spawn the Defending Siren on the opposite row. So if you play it as a fifth card, like you have five cards in your hand and you slam it, it already doesn't work. So you have to use it in your first, um, in your first four cards, basically, which means that you, mm, but at the same time, you want to have your opponent to play as many cards as possible early to get as, as much as you, as much power as possible. But still, even if you play for this um, uh, below Adrenaline 4, then it's 7 for 7 and your opponent will have a damaged unit, which is not bad, right? 7 for 7 is... Okay, you want something better, but it's already not bad. And you have uh, your opponent has damage unit. Sometimes maybe you can clock uh, the board with it. It's okay. And but at the same time it can play for like 12 for 7, 11 for 7. Good. That's very good. But not OP. I really love this card. I uh, this is a great design. This is great card. I this is my favorite card of all at the moment. Salamandra Abomination. This card, on the other hand, seems bad. In any card, in any deck, it's six. It's six for five, and you have to play it with Adrenaline four, sort of. Against like Skellige, uh, Syndicate, or um, Skoyatel. In tribute decks, it's seven for five, which is still like okay, but nothing game breaking. Of course, it's still if it purifies itself. Also, you cannot like reapply this poison. So this is not an engine. This is like one time effect that it's one time effect six for five. Eh, what? It sucks. But this design tells me that we're gonna see more of the self poison support. And we have this card also that will, uh, this is interesting, but at the moment it's not, it's okay. So with this card, uh, this card changed to 9 to 5, sort of. Well, 7 for seven for 5 plus 2 coins. If this card is on the board. So, well, you have, like, se several conditions. And then this card is 7 for 7, so... It's hard to calculate the value, but it's basically make this... You get 2 coins from this, so 2 coins from this, right? So, um, this card looks bad. This looks a little bit better, and it's also a very interesting card. So, basically, how it works Adrenaline fight whenever an allied unit is poisoned, gain two coins instead. So, if you have a heavy poison deck and you want to poison your opponents, you want to most of the time use it uh, later, right? Because your opponent, if, you, if he knows that you will play a lot of poison cards, they will play small unit first. If you slam Roland and you start poisoning your opponents to get a coin, you need to do it early. Because first, you need to have Roland on the board. Second, you have to start applying poison before Adren Adrenaline 5. Which means, in your first four cards, you need to play Roland and play poison. In your first four cards, your opponent won't play anything super big. So you will lose value from poison but you will get value from coins. So this is super interesting mechanic when you have to think if you prefer to get a coin or you prefer to get a bigger poison target. Do you want to use your poisons now to get coins and boost something or like damage something? Or do you want to use poison later to kill something bigger, but you lose value from Roland? So this is a super interesting mechanic. I really love this design because it uh, gives you puts a next layer and I think the pro players, not something like not someone like me, but pro players 
will have to think more and they will figure it out is it worth slamming Roland just to get these coins or is it not really worth it? Maybe I just need to call the poison. Maybe I have only one poison, so it's better to wait and poison my own unit. Or maybe it's better to slam a poison on opponent so he start to misplay. This creates very interesting dynamic on the board. And he still plays 7 for 7, which is like, okay, it's not... It's not terrible, so it's already playable and gives you this next layer of thinking, which is super cool design. Is it gonna be good? I don't know, but it sort of tells me that we're gonna see more poison support for Syndicate and probably more self-poison Syndicate package. So that's it for the first reveal. Some exciting cards that creates uh, an interesting dynamic and interesting uh, mechanics and tactics, which makes me excited but at the same time some of these cards seems at the moment a little bit unplayable and i don't want to go to new meta when the new cards are unplayable and we just have to play all decks but don't worry don't worry it's the first day we have still 60 or more cards to um, present so thank you for this one and i will see you in the part number two